We're going to have a look at structural isomerism. There are three types of structural isomerism. The first is called chain isomerism. This is where we alter the hydrocarbon chain. So let's take, for example, pentane, which has a formula C5H12. The straight chain form of pentane looks like this. Don't forget to put those hydrogens in. If we want to make isomers of pentane, we need to shift the atoms around by breaking bonds, but without removing or adding any new atoms. So if we swap the end carbon with that hydrogen, what would we make? Well, we'd have a methyl group on the second carbon, pop all the hydrogens in, and we've got a new molecule with a different name. The first one's called pentane, and this new molecule is called 2-methyl-butane, but because there's four carbons in the longest chain. If we took another carbon off the end and swapped it with that hydrogen over there, we could make a new molecule, which would have three carbons in the chain this time, and you'd actually have methyl groups coming off the middle carbon. You've got your two methyl groups there, and there's your new molecule. So that would be called 2,2-dimethyl-propane, because this time you've got three carbons in the longest chain. So 2,2-dimethyl-propane. But what would happen, instead of moving that carbon onto the middle carbon, we put it onto the group we'd already put there. So have a look this time. Could, could we have an ethyl group coming off the middle? Well, draw the molecule and see what happens if we put an ethyl group coming off the middle of a propane chain. Actually, you have to name it differently. Our longest chain has got four carbons in, and on the second carbon, we've got a methyl group, so it would be called 2-methyl-butane, which is exactly the same as the molecule we had before. And if the two are the same, they're not isomers of each other. Remember, they have to have different structures to be isomers. Let's have a look at the second type of isomerism. The second type of isomerism is called position isomerism. And position isomerism is where we change the position of a group or atom on the hydrocarbon chain. So again, we'll use five carbons in the chain, but this time we'll look at an alcohol. So we've got pentan 1 ol the alcohol, is on the first carbon. We can move the position of the alcohol to the second carbon to make a position isomer. So you've still got five carbons in your chain, but this time the OH group's on that second carbon, and we'd call that pentan 2 ol Let's try moving it along to the next carbon. So we're now going to put the OH the hydroxide group on the third carbon. We've made another alcohol, which we'd call pentam 3 ol Notice they all have the same number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms, same formula, different structure, so they're isomers. Let's move it along further. So let's put the OH group on the fourth carbon now and see what we've got. This time we have to lay number from right to left, keep the numbers as low as possible, and we've got pentam 2 ol the same as that one. Again, these two aren't isomers, so we can't move the OH group any further. The third type of isomerism we're going to look at is called functional group isomerism. This is where we change the structure of our molecules, but we end up with a different functional group. And we'll look at two examples. The first example is when we take esters, move around atoms, and we can make acids. Remember, these aren't real chemical reactions. We're just talking about structural relationships between molecules here. So take propanoic acid, for example. That's a functional group isomer of an ester. If we swap the CH3 for the H, we make a molecule that looks like this, which is an ester. So the first molecule, the carboxylic acid, is called propanoic acid. The second molecule is called methyl ethanoate and that's an ester. So by moving atoms around, we've gone from a carboxylic acid to an ester. Let's have a look at another example of functional group isomers. This time, let's have a look at aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones are functional group isomers of each other by moving the carbon-oxygen double bond. So have a look at propanal, for example. The C double bond O is on the end carbon. That's an aldehyde. But if we swap it with that hydrogen, move it to the second carbon, move the hydrogens back onto that first carbon, we've got the same number of atoms, but a different structure, and it's led to a different functional group. Propanal is an aldehyde, and that's become propanone, which is a ketone.